In this video, we are gonna be dissecting a sheep brain. Sheep brains are much smaller than human brains, but they have very similar structures. So this is gonna be a great model organ for what a human brain looks like. Now, right away, when you look at the brain, you'll see that it doesn't look like brains you've traditionally seen in movies before, where there's this blobby outer appearance. And that's because the outside of the brain is covered with three membranes. And these membranes are known as the meninges. So if you have heard of meningitis before, meningitis is when you have an infection of these three membranes or the fluid within those three membranes. Now of the three meninges, the one that is the most important for you to know is the outer layer and it's the toughest layer and it's known as the dura mater. In order to view the lobes of the brain and the cerebellum, we are going to need to remove the dura mater. So my major piece of advice as you're removing it is to pinch or pull up, if you can find a portion that will pinch or pull up, a portion of the dura mater. And it's helpful, especially if you have some pieces that are already broken right here. Your brain tissue is very sensitive and soft. Your brain is actually made of a lot of adipose or fat tissue. So you wanna be really careful. And as you're cutting off pieces of the dura mater, just try and keep the tip of the scissors pulled up from the brain so that you're not actually cutting any of this soft, deeper brain tissue. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and not talk while I just remove the front portion of the dura mater. Later, I will come back in and chat as I remove it off the cerebellum and as I remove it off of the base of our brain. The dura mater gets a little bit trickier to remove when we get to the bottom of the brain, the cerebellum, the brain stem, and the front of the brain. So at the front of the brain, there's these two meteor areas of the brain, and these are known as the olfactory bulbs that deal with smell. We really don't want to remove the entire olfactory bulbs. So when you remove the dura mater from this area, make sure you carefully lift it off the bulbs so that you can see I've kept the bulbs intact. To remove the dura mater off of the cerebellum, the dura mater ducks down into this line right here that we call the transverse fissure. So it's not a very um, precise process, but ultimately you just wanna cut some of the connections that are holding the dura mater and attaching it to the cerebellum. And if you can cut the connections, the dura mater starts to remove off the cerebellum. I'm going to wait to remove the rest of the dura mater from the bottom of the brain because I want to review some of the anatomy that we can see on the superior or top view of the brain. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is that we are focused right here or closer to the posterior or behind portion of the sheep brain and the anterior or front portion is up here. So this is where we're going to find your frontal lobe and this is where we're going to find the occipital lobe and the cerebellum, obviously. This line down the middle of the brain that separates the left and the right hemisphere is known as the longitudinal fissure. Fissure just meaning it's a split. And this line that separates the bigger portion of the brain, the cerebrum, from this little brain in the back, the cerebellum, this is known as the transverse fissure. As I've already mentioned, this bulbous structure is the cerebellum. And at the base of the brain, we can see the brain stem down here, which eventually leads to the spinal cord. Now, these two sides of the brain are both cerebrum, and the cerebrum is broken into a left and a right hemisphere. Remember, when you're thinking left and right, 
you always want to picture this brain inside the organism or inside the sheep and ask yourself which side is its left side which side is its right side so we've got left side of the sheep because this is where its left feet would be and we've got the right side of the sheep because this is where its right feet would be on the inferior side of the brain, we do see these olfactory bulbs, which deal and process with smell or olfactory information. Fun fact is that sheep have very large olfactory bulbs because sheep rely upon their sense of smell much more than humans rely upon their sense of smell. For example, if a baby sheep gets lost, it doesn't look for its mother necessarily. It can actually smell its way back to its mother. So these are right at the front of the brain and they are the two olfactory bulbs. Posterior to the olfactory bulbs, you can see this location where there are two stalks right here and right here. These are your two optic nerves, optic referring to the eye. So these deliver optic or sight information from the eye to the brain. And what happens at this location is the two optic nerves cross over so that information from the left eye actually goes to the right hemisphere or right side of the brain and information from the right eye actually goes to the left hemisphere or the left side of the brain. This location where the two optic nerves cross over is known as the optic chiasm. So this is where the optic nerves cross to deliver information to the opposite side of the brain. Posterior to the optic nerves and optic chiasm, you can see this little bean of a structure and this is the pituitary gland, also known as the master endocrine gland. This gland produces and receives a ton of hormones that dictate the production of many other hormones throughout the body. So this pituitary gland is sitting right at our inferior portion of our brain, and it's most likely going to get removed when I do what I'm about to do next. The pituitary gland is anchored down to the inferior part of the brain by a little stalk of tissue, which I may have just broken there, or that could be it there, but I think it was this first one, known as the infundibulum. The infundibulum is a thin stalk of blood vessels and nerves that carries blood and nerves um, to our pituitary gland here so that it can do its function. So if you ever see on your test, a little stalk of tissue connecting the brain to the pituitary gland, that's the infundibulum. At this point, I am gonna remove this mass of tissue, remove the remaining dura mater, I'm gonna try and keep the optic chiasm and optic nerves, and we're gonna start looking at some more, more internal structures of the brain. With the dura mater removed, we can now see that the brain has raised areas, we call these gyri, or gyrus for singular, and we have these sunken areas, which are called sulci or sulcus for singular. So the gyri are raised and the sulci, just think sunken, are these sunken in areas that make up the texture of the brain. We can also start to have an idea of what the lobes of the brain are. The lobes of the brain are separated by some large sulci. So up here in the anterior portion of the brain, is where we have our frontal lobe. At the top of the brain is the parietal lobe. On the sides of the brain, we can roughly say that those are the temporal lobes of the brain. And towards the posterior region of the brain near the cerebellum, we can say that this is the occipital lobe region of the brain, each occipital lobe, a left one and a right one. Just to remind you, this is cerebellum, and let's look at the brainstem. The brainstem is broken into three parts. Just to be clear, this is not part of your brainstem. This trunk or stalk right here is actually the beginning of the spinal cord. So the first portion of the brainstem, the most distal portion, from about here to here, is known as the medulla oblongata. Anterior to the medulla oblongata, closer to the brain, we have this raised bump of an area 
and this is the pawns. And a silly memory hook that I have in my own head is because it bumps out like this, I think kind of looks pregnant. So I always just think pregnant pawns. Now the next one should be really easy to remember. The most proximal part of the brain stem that comes and meets with the cerebrum and the other portions of the brain and the diencephalon, this is the midbrain. So the brain stem consists of the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata. In order to view the internal anatomy of the brain, we are going to use a scalpel and we are gonna make a sagittal cut along the brain to cut it into a left side and a right side. Two big pieces of advice anytime you are dissecting with a scalpel. Number one, never hold the specimen in your hands because if you place the scalpel inside the specimen and it's softer than you anticipate, the scalpel could very easily end up in your hand. So the brain should be top side or superior side up in your tray. The second big piece of advice when working with a scalpel is that this tool is not intended to be a saw. The blade of your scalpel should be very sharp. You don't need to have any back and forth motion in order to cut directly through the brain. So you wanna try and do this in one cut if possible, where you take the scalpel and we are gonna cut right along the longitudinal hemisphere. And you wanna try and have the scalpel go straight through the brain. Notice how deep the scalpel is in the brain. I am trying to have the blade of my scalpel touch the blue rubber of my tray. When you get to the cerebellum, you can just estimate midline since that longitudinal fissure disappears. And this is a great way to see just how soft the tissue of the brain is. And now that our scalpel has cut through the brain, you can see a lot of the internal anatomy. Now that we are deep inside the brain, let's look at the internal anatomy. Connecting the two cerebral hemispheres is this piece of tissue. And so you can picture when the brain was back together that kind of held the cerebral hemispheres in place. And this is known as the corpus callosum. It kind of looks like a tadpole shape on the inside of the brain. There's a space inside the corpus callosum, and this is one of the ventricles in our brain. Our brain has these fluid filled spaces within it. There are four total. This specific space that's filled with cerebrospinal fluid is known as the lateral ventricle. And you can see it's inside the corpus callosum. Now we've discussed the cerebrum or the main portion of the brain that's broken into the lobes in the left and the right hemispheres. We've discussed the cerebellum. We've discussed the brainstem. Let's talk about this middle portion of your brain right here. This is known as the diencephalon. And the diencephalon is made of many smaller parts. One of the easiest parts to see is this teeny tiny gland right here. This is your pineal gland. It makes melatonin, which helps regulate your sleep-wake cycles. Beneath the pineal gland, this general region is known as the thalamus. That's like our relay center of our brain. And beneath the thalamus, an aptly named part of the brain is known as the hypothalamus. And so that's this general region here. Hypothalamus just means beneath the thalamus. Now, you may think that this is the pituitary gland because you've probably learned that the pituitary gland kind of hangs off the hypothalamus. I'd like to remind you that we removed the pituitary glands a while ago when we removed all of that dura mater. This is actually the optic chiasm and where one of the optic nerves was. Internally, we can also see some internal anatomy of the brain stem. So to recap, the most proximal portion of the brainstem right here is the midbrain. And then we have the pons where that bump was. And then we have the medulla oblongata. And all the way back here, we have the spinal cord. You'll notice some color differences in the tissue of our brain. The outside of our brain is in a darker shade of gray. And this is known as gray matter. Gray matter occurs anywhere we have cell bodies or the soma of a neuron. So all of the cell bodies of the brain are layered on the outside. More internally and deep, 
We have a lighter colored tissue and this is known as white matter. And white matter is white because this is where all of the axons of each neuron come down into the brain. And you'll remember axons are covered with that myelin sheath. Myelin is a lipid or a fatty substance and it's white. So the white matter that's deeper in the brain is due to that myelin sheath. In the cerebellum, we have a really interesting configuration of white matter in gray matter that forms this really beautiful tree looking structure. And so when it was dissected originally, it was given a very proper name. This is known as the arbor vitae, which means the tree of life. And that gray and white matter patterning only happens in the cerebellum. Let's review. The main portion of the brain is known as your cerebrum. The cerebrum is split down the middle with a longitudinal fissure into a left cerebral hemisphere and a right cerebral hemisphere. The cerebrum is followed by the cerebellum, and the line that splits the cerebrum and cerebellum is known as the transverse fissure. All the way back here, we can see the spinal cord. When we flip the brain over, we see the olfactory bulbs at the front of the brain. Those deal with smell information, optic nerve, optic nerve, they cross over at the optic chiasm. The pituitary gland was attached here by a thin stalk of tissue known as the infundibulum. We removed that. And posterior to the pituitary gland, we have our brain stem. So the first portion of the brain stem, right behind where the pituitary gland was, is the midbrain, the pons, it's the bump, and the medulla oblongata, which ends here, and the brain, uh, spinal cord, pardon me, starts right here. The cerebrum can be divided into lobes. So at the front of the cerebrum, we have the two frontal lobes. Top of the cerebrum, we have the two parietal lobes. Side of the cerebrum, we have the two temporal lobes. And at the back of the cerebrum, we have the two occipital lobes. Internally, we have the corpus callosum that connects the two cerebral hemispheres with the space inside of it known as the lateral ventricle. We see gray matter on the outside of the cerebrum, white matter on the inside of the cerebrum. This general region is known as the diencephalon and it includes the pineal glands, the thalamus, and then this general region is just the hypothalamus. Posterior to the diencephalon is the brain stem, which consists of the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, which ends here and the spinal cord begins. And lastly, we have the cerebellum's internal pattern, which is known as the arbor vitae or tree of life.